Hi, I'm Dr. Marta Perez, and you're here for today's episode of Birth Prep, Birth in the Time of COVID. As an OBGYN and as a doctor that works exclusively in the hospital taking care of patients on labor and delivery, called a laborist, I have been working with patients throughout the pandemic. I have cared for many patients without COVID who are giving birth. I have cared for patients with COVID who are asymptomatic, and I have cared for symptomatically sick COVID positive patients. There's been a lot of changes to labor and delivery throughout the last few months, and I've seen and heard a lot of different experiences from both my patients in real life and also from my online community. I've experienced some of their anxieties and their fears, but also a lot of their joys and there has been a ton of joy. So let's talk more about giving birth in the time of COVID today. I've seen tons of very emotional moments and frustrations around policies on labor and delivery that are meant to keep both pregnant people, their families, and healthcare providers safe, but that inevitably can cause some frustrations and policies themselves may be imperfect and they may cause some hurt and pain. But at the same time, I've seen tons of joy around birth. Many patients have told me that their experience was very special, that they almost liked that they had one visitor, that they didn't even notice that they were wearing a mask even while pushing, and that they had the same amount of joy that they experienced with other pregnancies. Obviously, this topic is filled with lots of anxieties and uncertainties for pregnant people around this time. And so let's discuss it more, and I think you'll feel more empowered by the information that I share. I've extensively reviewed studies and data around COVID and pregnancy way since the beginning of the pandemic, and all of that is shared on Instagram. You can head to my Instagram where I have two highlights full of information on different studies that have come out, updates throughout time on COVID and pregnancy. I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail about all of COVID and pregnancy in this video. We're really gonna focus on the labor and delivery experience, but I will summarize now some of what the data has shown. The first thing to know is that we're very early on in this brand new disease. When we have a brand new disease, scientists and doctors are rushing to find out more about it. So the state of data around COVID-19 is constantly evolving, and especially when it comes to pregnancy, which is a specific population. It's because we're so early on, some of the science that's been published now or maybe published soon may end up years later being wrong or being strengthened. And that's the normal part of the scientific process. That's how science evolves. But where are we now with the data? So here's a summary of some of the data of what we know now. The first thing is that it appears as though pregnant women are a vulnerable population for COVID-19. Similar to other respiratory viruses like the flu, pregnant women are at risk for having a higher morbidity meaning they may get more sick than their age-matched controls. They may be more likely to be admitted to the hospital or ICU. Right now, there hasn't been mortality data published for COVID-19 in pregnancy compared to other non-pregnant age and health-matched controls. So we're not really sure if there's a higher mortality or not, but there's definitely a higher risk of more severe illness. At the same time, there has been some work done showing that Pregnant women have a higher rate of asymptomatic COVID when we do universal screening on labor and delivery than other non-pregnant women who are coming in for an unrelated type of surgery. Data has been mixed about whether the coronavirus can pass from the maternal bloodstream to the fetus in the uterus called vertical transmission. Overall, it looks like this isn't common, but we don't really know during which trimesters or if this is possible or not. Overall, we've seen really reassuring safety about breastfeeding with a COVID positive parent who's breastfeeding. So that's really reassuring. We always want breastfeeders to use excellent hand hygiene, excellent pump cleaning, and wear masks while breastfeeding. But overall, it's looked reassuring for that. Now, let's get to my favorite place, the L&D floor. First, I'm gonna go over some of the history and some of the policies that we've seen commonly in L&D floors during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
And then I'm gonna give you a list of questions to discuss with your doctor. Each location will be a little bit different. There are no overlying policies that apply to every single L&D. So it's important that you talk with your doctor or with the representatives from the hospital that you're planning to deliver with about what the policies are. They also may be subject to change. So this will be an ongoing conversation. In some locations, the pandemic may be in a downslope and a better control, and you might see loosening of some of the restrictions. In other places, you may be having surges. So they may be going back to a little bit more restrictive policy or something like that. So it's really important that you talk with your birth provider, your midwife or doctor, as well as the hospital if that's something that's concerning to you. The main goal of L&D policies in the COVID times are twofold. One, we wanna protect patients. We want to protect patients from getting COVID-19 from each other. We also wanna protect our healthcare providers. We need healthy healthcare providers in order to take care of patients. So that's where the policies come from, protecting both families and patients so that the level of infectivity goes way down. Policies on labor and delivery floors are trying to balance these goals with having a really positive patient birth experience. In some places, a policy may not be a great fit and may cause a lot of frustration, while other policies have had really good successes. So a lot of this may depend on the resources of your area, the rates of the epidemic in your area, the availability of testing, and your own ho like hospital or birth center's individual policies. At the very beginning of the pandemic, in the hotspot of New York City, we saw an outbreak on an L&D floor. The virus clearly passed between patients and visitors on the floor. That was a big issue. And so because of that, there was a no visitor policy instituted in New York City only. That policy only lasted a few weeks before patients were allowed to have visitors again. And I haven't heard of anywhere else in the country that went to a zero visitor policy. So I think that was one unique situation. It garnered a lot of media attention and there was an appropriate amount of backlash and criticism. I believe it was a public health measure that needed to be instituted at the time, but I'm very glad that it wasn't something that happened more universally or across the country and it was only short-lived. Most labor and delivery units are allowing at least one visitor or support person for the person in labor. That's certainly what my hospital has done. Some places have moved to two visitors as rates in their area may have decreased. So talk with your doctor or midwife about what the policies are for visitors in your area. There was also a time when the AAP or the American Academy of Pediatrics was recommending that COVID positive mothers or parents be separated from a newborn in order to decrease the risk of transmission from the positive person to the newborn. This was really distressing. Other organizations such as the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists called ACOG and the World Health Organization had a much more nuanced approach where there was shared decision-making between the healthcare team and the family about rooming together versus separation. Shared decision-making is basically a collaborative conversation where you talk about the benefits and the risk of a given policy or recommendation and whether or not it fits for a specific family and situation. In the late summer though, the American Academy of Pediatrics actually removed their recommendation for separation. So not all places were going by AAP guidelines, some were doing the shared decision-making. Since the changed AAP recommendation, I haven't heard of labor and delivery floors that are routinely recommending newborn parent separation for a positive parent test. In the exception of very special needs for the neonate, special medications, or a special unit like NICU or something, or critical illness of the parent. So I really think this policy is probably something that of separation is something that's behind us. Another policy is around masks. Masks help prevent the spread of COVID-19. There are no negative health effects associated with wearing masks. 
So they're a really great intervention to help keep everyone safe. It's certainly universal that healthcare providers are expected to wear masks at all times so that they prevent spread to each other and to their patients. We're seeing a lot of labor and delivery also recommending or mandating masks for visitors and patients themselves. So you may be asked to wear a mask during, throughout your labor and throughout your delivery, or there may be times when you're asked to wear a mask and times when it may be okay to take it off. For example, if no other healthcare providers are in the room and that's to protect everyone. I have heard a lot of feedback from patients that they were very anxious about what it would be like to push and to go through birth with a mask on. And universally it was, I barely even noticed it. And it was still the most ex special experience of my life. It didn't take anything away. So I would encourage you not to worry too much about mask use. You can try out different masks and see which ones are the most comfortable. You can try wearing them for extended periods of time or maybe taking a brisk walk, something that uh, mimics more exertion um, to see how you feel. But I do think that your labor and delivery will probably recommend and encourage mask wearing. The other policy may be around testing. Some labor and delivery units may ask for COVID-19 testing either before admission to labor and delivery or at the time of admission. It may only be for certain types of cases or it may be universal. Um, they may ask that you get tested several days before a planned admission or offer testing at the time of admission. This will heavily depend on resources in your area in the hospital. As you know, there isn't universal access to COVID-19 testing and some of it even maybe take a long time to return. So it may be futile if it takes three days to come back. So definitely this is something that will be variable between locations. Okay, here's something that I've done for you that I thought could be really helpful. I've gotten messages from a lot of people who are just worried. What if this, what if that, what if this, what if that? And the best way to get rid of that worry and anxiety is to find out the answers to those questions. So I've come up with a list of questions that I think can be really helpful to discuss with your doctor or midwife about expectations at the labor and delivery and birth process with COVID-19. You can certainly add more questions to this or take off ones that aren't of concern to you. I'm gonna discuss them all right now, but I'm also listing them in the show notes below. So you can copy and paste them, write them down, and bring them to your next prenatal care visit. One, who is tested for COVID-19 and when are they tested? Is there a universal testing policy for patients or is it just certain cases? Is it anyone, whether they're symptomatic or not, or only symptomatic cases? Two, what is the current visitor policy on labor and delivery? How many may stay postpartum? Once a visitor is in the hospital, can they leave? Sometimes we're seeing that we want the visitor to quarantine with the patient, which may affect who cares for your other children or goes and takes the dog out for a walk. As before, visitors used to be able to come and go, they may be expected to stay. So get clear on that too. Three, if my baby is healthy, is there a policy of separating positive parents and newborns or are they allowed to stay together? Four, what is the mask policy for patients admitted to labor and delivery during the birth process and during their postpartum stay. Five, how has COVID-19 affected normal policies and services on the postpartum floor? Will the lactation consultant still be available? Is the nursery open so the baby can go there? Will the photographer who takes newborn photos still be available? Or any other questions about the pediatrician's visits of the postpartum baby, et cetera. Finally, number six, if I am positive for COVID-19 at the time of delivery, but I am asymptomatic, how will that change management of my labor, delivery, and postpartum stay? Will I be in a different room? Will I be required to wear a mask? Will my baby be able to stay with me? Will I still be allowed a visitor? How will care for my baby change in that situation? So I hope this has been really super helpful about demystifying and letting you know exactly what's been going on on labor and delivery during the COVID-19 pandemic. As an OBGYN during this pandemic, I want to reassure you that my patients have shared really positive experiences. It is normal to be worried and anxious about how all of this affects a birth experience. And it's totally okay to be really disappointed that the expectations you may have had for birth are going to be different. I want to reassure you that we as doctors and your nurses and your midwives, we want to take excellent care of you. 
We want to give you the best care no matter if there's a pandemic happening or not. We want you to have joy. We want this to be positive and we welcome your questions. Please ask us, tell us your concerns and worries. We want to know. If you have additional questions or comments, I'd really love to hear your experiences down in the comments. Other people will really like to hear what your experience giving birth is or what your concerns or worries are or what some of what's going on with you and your birth and pregnancy during COVID. It really helps to have community here. So please comment below. Also, don't forget to like and of course subscribe for more information. I'll do these videos occasionally and depending on the feedback I get in the comments and other issues, it will give me content for next time. Again, I have tons of information on Instagram as well. Visit me there and I will see you next Friday for birth prep.